Hi, everybody. Great to be with you. Michael Millerman here. This is a class on Carl Schmitt's Legality and Legitimacy. Legality and Legitimacy was written in 1932, a year before Hitler and the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or Nazi Party, came to power in Germany. Schmitt's book was cited in the legal discussions that took place at the time. As McCormick writes in his introduction, the ideas of legality and legitimacy were intimately intertwined, rather entwined, with political reality because Schmidt advised powerful conservative cabinet ministers, most notably the aristocrats Kurt von Schleicher and Franz von Papen. Indeed, he continues, it's quite possible that one or both conveyed Schmidt's thoughts to President Paul von Hindenburg. We know for sure that the aides of Schleicher and Papen were citing legality and legitimacy in support of various political and legal strategies throughout the last year of the Weimar Republic, he writes. So you might be wondering who those people are that I just mentioned and why it matters. Kurt von Schleicher was the defense minister. Franz von Papen was the chancellor or commander in chief. To put it simply, these people and their faction tried to solve the growing threat of Nazi and communist parties by invoking emergency decree powers granted to the president, whose name was Hindenburg. They found the legal basis for those powers in Article 48 of the Constitution, the Weimar Constitution, and it was Schmidt's arguments that they relied on when seeking an executive ban on parties like the Communists and the National Socialists who profess enmity toward the Constitution and the legislative process itself. So Schmidt's book was being cited by these people to defend the executive action of the president in banning and taking action against these extreme parties, extreme in the sense that they are anti-constitutional or that they're seeking to undermine the constitutional order and the legislative process. So here's the problem in a nutshell. What do you do if you have a constitution that guarantees equal rights to political parties, even to those parties that want to overturn the constitution itself? Schmidt, as McCormick writes in his introduction, argues that even the most formally neutral constitution, meaning one that does not declare any specific substantive moral principles or content, cannot espouse neutrality towards its own existence. No constitution can, as we'll see with consistency, facilitate its own destruction. In analyzing the constitution that was in effect in 1932, the constitution of the Weimar Republic, Schmidt argued, as we'll see, that the first part of the constitution reflected this indefensible formal neutrality. But the good news, so to speak, was that the second part of the constitution left room for a kind of dictatorial authority. Those very emergency decree powers that could be invoked to save the constitution by suspending it. As McCormick writes in his introduction, Schmidt argued that parts of the constitution may be legally violated so as to save it legitimately. So that's roughly the historical background. We're now going to move to the conceptual analysis, but first I want to mention one more point. Some people have said that Schmidt's argument was designed to help save the Weimar Republic from extremism. And if people had listened to him, they could have used the extraordinary powers granted by the Constitution to ban the communists and the Nazis from power, as we just discussed. Others, though, have argued that Schmidt's political ideas are inherently reactionary and fascistic and therefore could not have had a primarily liberal or constitutional aim. That's the position of McCormick himself, for instance. Ultimately, you will have to judge Schmidt's analysis and intentions for yourself. My job is just to make sure that as much as possible, you understand the core concepts and key ideas, and I'll leave it for you to um, evaluate afterwards, whether you think Schmidt was trying to protect the constitution or whether you think he's a reactionary force whose arguments are more dangerous than salutary. So we turn now to the book's introduction, which presents four kinds of state, four state forms. 